What's going on everybody and thank you so much for tuning in to this particular video. This is going to be an introduction uh, to the filmmaker that I am going to be covering for uh, the first filmmaker in this particular series of videos that I'm going to be making here on the channel. Now, a couple things that I wanted to do and announce in this uh, first video is to kind of let you guys know the layout of this. So, uh, credit. First things first, what inspired me to do this? My good friend and fellow YouTuber Daisuke Beppu, who will definitely be linked down below, he's, uh, he's the reason. I wish I had uh, some really super long, you know, uh, I was driving and, and I looked out the window and I saw uh, this dog and this dog was on its two legs and it was holding a sign, and that sign, you know, I wish it was something like that, but it's just literally, I watch Dice Gay's videos, and just the amount of detail he goes into on films and filmmakers and anything really inspired me, and, and in no way, shape, or form am I, one, going to try to copy him, not at all, and two... I am in no way, shape, or form claiming that I am going to be anywhere near as knowledgeable uh, anything that Daisuke is. Daisuke is this rare breed of person who can really make you fascinated by a movie that you may never have even seen before. So I hope to kind of convey that same thing here, but of course doing it my way. Um, so... Uh, Segwaying into that, you know, I want to, for these first few filmmakers, I want to really highlight people that you wouldn't really even find highlighted in in anything. And I know I've talked about this in other videos here on the channel. Just wanted to emphasize it here as well. It's something that is, uh, something that to me is important because just because a filmmaker isn't highlighted doesn't mean that that filmmaker doesn't have something to offer. And this particular filmmaker has a lot to offer, I think. Um, of course, from the uh, thumbnail of the video, I am, for the first filmmaker, and of course, if you follow me on social media, at T101Podcast, you'll know that I've talked about this and revealed it. I am covering Steve Odekirk. He is mostly a writer, but he has directed some. Now, of course there are some things, if you look at Steve's body of work, there are some things that he has directed that I will not be covering in this series. And I wanted to kind of touch on those with you, and that way it's sort of, you know, I did mention it, but they're not covered. So the things that are not going to be covered here on this uh, series where I'm talking about Steve Odekirk is a film that he uh, directed... Uh, he wrote as well. I am looking at my laptop here uh, just to kind of guide me through this. Um, Smart Alex from 1987. Uh, this is a movie that I don't think is readily available anywhere uh, as far as I know. Um, of, of course, if you guys know anything about Steve Odekirk's body of work, let me know down in the comments and uh, I would be happy to read those comments and uh, to be corrected. Um, as far as I know, this might be a lost film. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I couldn't find it anywhere, and so I kind of just scratched it. Um, it's not on home media, so that's a big criteria for me. Um, so technically, I guess you could say that is his directorial debut, um, but we're not going to be covering it here on these videos. The other thing that we're not going to be covering... Um, are two, or not, well, yeah, two technically, uh, things that he did for television. So in 1997, uh, he uh, directed a uh, TV movie called The O Show, or I think it's also, I don't want to butcher it, yes, steve.odekirk.com is also a uh, name for it. And it was a variety special that he did for uh, NBC. Um, so that's not going to be covered here, um, but that actually is available online that you can check out. And uh, this great YouTube channel called uh, Odekirk Report, um, 
is a place that you can go to and check that out. It's not the highest quality by any means, but it's, you know, you can definitely watch it. And the last thing is uh, Steve Odekirk has a, a series um, that he created based around thumbs, believe it or not. Yes, thumbs. Um, and he directed, as far as I know and as far as I can tell, I don't know how accurate it is because for some reason I did pick up the set. There is a DVD box set that you can buy of these uh, six short films. I picked it up on eBay and um, on the back there are no credits and then even when you play it there is no uh, for the one that he's credited as the director on at the end of it as far as I saw there was no director credit given to uh, Steve so I don't know what's going on with that but he is credited like if you go on IMDB or Letterboxd anywhere really uh, he is credited for the first short film in that series uh, which is called Thumb Wars, which is a parody of Star Wars. Um, and then, of course, later on, they, they did other things like the Blair Thumb, parodying the Blair Witch Project, the God Thumb, the Godfather, uh, Thumb Tannic, Titanic, and, and it's all based around thumbs. Um, interesting stuff. Uh, I don't know that I'm necessarily the right person for it, even though I am a a giant fan of Steve Odekirk's. I don't know that that series is right up my alley. It's a real kind of specific person that would really like that stuff. There were a couple things. Of course you have to be familiar with what he's parodying. First of all, I will say that. I'm not a big Star Wars guy, so I watched Thumb Wars and I'm kind of like half going, what the hell's going on? Um, I did watch Thumb Tannic and there were some things that were funny in there, but it is kind of odd that it's all thumbs. So it's really hard to get on board with it. There's a real uh, disconnect there for some reason. I don't know. It's, it's it's strange. Let me know down in the comments, of course. Is there anybody out there that's a fan of those thumb shorts that he did? Uh, they popularly aired on Cartoon Network. That's really where they kind of took off. So anyways, that stuff is not going to be covered um, here on uh, this series. I'm really going to be zeroing in on his four feature-length directorial credits that have home media releases. So I think that covers all bases right there. Um, and of course, those are going to be Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls. As of right now, this is the only film that he's written and directed that has a Blu-ray release. So yes, we will be talking about in the next video, Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls. I'm so excited to talk about this with you guys. Following Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls is going to be Nothing to Lose with Tim Robbins and Martin Lawrence. This was a film that I had never seen prior to wanting to do this series and to cover Steve Odekirk films, and I was pleasantly surprised. I will just say that. I was pleasantly surprised. So we're going to be checking that out as well. And then, of course, I think arguably, I'm going to save a lot of my thoughts for the video, but I think arguably... Steve's masterwork, Kung Pao, Enter the Fist. This does not have a Blu-ray release. I don't know that it would necessarily benefit from a Blu-ray release, but either way, this isn't on Blu-ray. And I love this film. I am so excited to talk with you guys about this one. This is going to be the highlight, I think. This is, ugh, I'm so excited. And then to be honest with you guys, this is the one film that I, as of this recording, still have not seen. And that is Barnyard, um, the Nickelodeon film. He did write and direct this. This, of course, led to the television series Back at the Barnyard on Nickelodeon. Um, but yeah, this is his one animated film that he has uh, written and directed. And it's interesting looking. I will say that. It is very interesting looking. I don't know what to expect with it. But this was in like a DVD bin at Walmart for like three bucks. So I, I was excited. To find it definitely brand new so yeah I'm, I'm excited for it so these are going to be the four films that I'm going to be covering in the next four videos so I hope you guys are excited for this I hope you guys have seen some of these movies I'm pretty sure a lot of people have seen Ace Ventura and I'm pretty sure a lot of people have seen Kung Pao I think it's his other two films sort of like me that uh, are not that well known Maybe, maybe I could be wrong about Nothing to Lose. Maybe it has a really big fan base, but uh, 
Um, yeah, these are the films that I'm going to be covering. So I am so excited to be doing this. I hope you guys are on board for this. Like I said, Steve Odekirk is not somebody that you would find in a book or a list of the greatest filmmakers of all time. But I think, though, that he has a pretty cool body of work. And I'm just excited to talk with you about a, dare I say underrated filmmaker dare i say even me saying that sounds kind of weird but he might be he he might be with some of these films that he has in his resume so um anyways guys thank you so much i'm so excited to be doing this and let me know down in the comments are you a steve odekirk fan are you not a steve odekirk fan what are you um and then of course as we go forward, I'm going to be covering other filmmakers, so you can let me know who you might like to see me cover in a future video. So having said all of that, I will see you in the next video for some 101 on Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls.